This video is sponsored by NextPCB. NextPCB is kind of crazy because I've used JLC and uh, PCB Way quite a lot in the past. And one thing I really missed from those places was reasonably priced HDI, so buried in blind vias. And NextPCB is able to do it for like cheap. Um, I'll put the, put this on screen, but I did like a, a 25 by 25 millimeter for eight layer PCB with buried in blind vias, and it was like 450 bucks for five of them which is just crazy, it would be like 800 bucks at uh, PCB Way or whatever, so uh, really sweet stuff. Um, give them a shot, they're um, kind of like JLC as well, and they're also an electronics distributor. Um, so give them a shot, give them a shot if you haven't seen it before. We're gonna go ahead and jump into this. This is my unboxing video, my my haul from NextPCB. Um, they sponsored me. They're doing this thing where they'll sponsor people up to, to $500, and this was just $200, $250 for 10 of these assembled uh, with all the parts and everything included so uh, big shout out to them um, they're really nice to work with it was it was quick as well so um, thanks thanks to them and they're also as compared to JLC where it's kind of onerous to source components they also will source stuff for you if they don't have it in stock um, JLC it's kind of like they expect you to do it in a sense right so um, it's nice. So this is the first project I've done with Next PCB um, ever, actually, and um, things came out great. It's a four-layer PCB, uh, no buried and blind vias, no filled and capped vias, um, but you know, decent requirements. Four-layer guy using the NRF 54L15. Um, so just broad strokes, 54L15 is, is a Bluetooth chip. It's this guy in the center. There is an external flash for device firmware update. It's optional. You could probably remove this, um, depending on how big the firmware ends up being. This is going to be using thread and Bluetooth, um, a button, LED, uh, and then the, the passive components and crystals required for this. You can kind of see over here, this around the edge, this is the trace antenna. So if you flip this guy over, one, you can see all the test points I've added. So test points for all of the various functions so that I can program it. And then these are actually surface mount pads for uh, CR2032 holders, these two big pads here. But the, uh, the critical thing, the antenna has this area under it that is kept out. There's no copper fill under this, so you can see that. So that's uh, that antenna is free to radiate. I haven't tested this antenna yet, actually. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the way you'll end up tuning it, um, I have these extra components here at the, the very end, this pie filter. Play around with the component values, uh, trim the length of the antenna even a little bit um, with a, a VNA hooked up to it. Um, and you can uh, can get better performance out of it. And the important part of that is that you get better range, you get better battery uh, performance out of it because you retransmit less. So it's important. It's important to get your antenna tuned. Um, but the the stars of the show here are one, the next PCB logo, very important. But the uh, two environmental sensors here. So these are both from Sensirium. This little black square one is the SHT40, which is a temperature and humidity sensor. This is actually a SPI, excuse me, I squared C slave to the STCC4, which is Sensirian's miniature um, uh, CO2 sensor. Now this, this sensor here is actually equivalent to this Sensirian SCD41 I have here. It's the same technology. You can kind of see this little ceramic element at the top of both of them, but it's just so, so, so much smaller on the STCC4. Um, makes it a lot easier. I think it's marginally lower power as well. So I'm able to fit this into a coin cell holder, basically like a coin cell size thing. This is about the size of an air tag. So just for some size comparison, this is USB powered, of course, um, but you can see just the, the sensor alone is like the size of the, the whole solution almost. Um, they use a Nordic module, I believe. You can look up the FCC ID and confirm that, but I believe this is a, it's a Bluetooth module at the very least. Um, see the, the little ceramic antenna coming off? Um, the solution size is just, it's, it's, uh, it's much smaller with this, this new sensor, and it's a very new sensor. So the intent is to use this to monitor CO2 in every room in the house. So that we've seen the, seen the PCB, the fruits, the fruits of my labor, thank you to next PCB. We're going to go ahead and walk through the design of this guy. This isn't the cleanest schematic I've ever been responsible for <laughs> in my life. There's some key things I'd like to point out about the design. Most of this is informed by Nordic. Right, so this this comes from uh, Nordic. Uh, what crystal to use here? Like what pins serve what function? In fact, this probably needs to be cleaned up a little bit. You see, you can in KiCad set specific pin functions if the symbol uh, has those things populated. Um, but yeah, I mean, most of this is informed by that. So these these caps and 
this layout over here for the onboard DC to DC, all this stuff is kind of informed by them. These matching components are also informed by what reference design, and the reference design may change. Like you need to go um, see what the latest is typically with like any RF design, it's always a, a safe bet. Um, the additional things we've added here are a pie filter, and I've labeled these Z for just like any kind of impedance. Um, so uh, if things get complicated, right? If they need to, whoever's tuning the antenna, if you need to play around with different values, and you're not getting good performance, you can actually change out this series component and the shunt component, and you get different performance if you put the shunt component on either side. So it's good to have this flexibility. In general, if you have the ability, uh, you should put a pie filter in front of your antenna. We'll go ahead and hop over to the, the PCB layout just so you can see. The antenna actually is just a um, an arc uh, element in KiCad that connects to this this trace coming out here. And I did some some messy stuff here where it's kind of like filleted together. Uh, doesn't look excellent, but uh, it, it does look good. So, uh, and then I use some some outsets here to set the the keep out area. Back to the schematic though. I've added test points on critical things here. Since the intent is for this to be a mass-produced design and I had some space constraints, I didn't actually end up using a tag connect on this. So I typically use the tag connect, and if you haven't seen the tag connect, this, this is the tag connect. Um, I didn't really have like room for it. It didn't seem especially comfortable. Like I could throw it up here, but I kind of interfered with the logo. I didn't want it to be near the antenna, and so I just ended up adding some, some test points around, around here. So in general, with these test points, you want to add them to anything you need to validate the entire system. So um, there's a test point, and in a manner of speaking, there's a test point for uh, VDD and ground. I added a dedicated ground test point over here for the SWD pins uh, reset. You have these things. Um, and then you, know, you can validate a lot of the system using these test points. So you can have a UART that runs some test stuff. Uh, you, you flash your part over SWD and then output results over uh, UART, but you just need you need visibility in the system. For debugging stuff, I've added some test points for I squared C, just so I can see what's what's happening. Um, and it's just important to have a testable PCB for those reasons. And it doesn't mean that like every net has to have a test point necessarily, but it isn't a bad idea, especially when you're early on if you're not making a size constrained version of something. To just have it, just have it everywhere. There's not much else going on. We have that flash I talk about in the two sensors, and this this guy controls this, this guy. And the reference sign said it didn't need any external pull-ups, so I didn't populate them. Um, yes, yeah, so this this is able to do Bluetooth and thread uh, and connect back to another, another forthcoming uh, project, maybe in another video we'll talk about, um, that is Wi-Fi enabled. It's an ESP32 C6 based design. And then walking through the board design, um, there's really, this is just a reference design. It, it, RF isn't scary so long as you have a good reference design um, and you're not trying to extract maximum performance. Like this doesn't have to be maximally performant. It's gonna be performant, right? Um, it, it corresponds with the reference design, the, the antenna is a quarter wavelength, all these things. Um, but it's not it's not that scary. Like this is gonna work even if I don't tune it. You know what I mean? Like the, the antenna is gonna work fine. Like it will work not perfectly. Maybe the enclosure is gonna change how things work, but it's gonna work fine. Um, what's interesting about this as well, hop into the 3D view here, you see these little cutouts? It's to thermally decouple this guy from the board. So you can see it's really only like its massive area that it can connect to the ground plane is here. That's like it. Um, so it shouldn't really uh, couple thermally to the board itself, but should try to get like outside air, um, uh, the temperature of the outside air. And there'll be a, a nice hole here in the enclosure. Um, and I'll turn off the, the drawings here so you can see right, the beautiful Next PCB logo. Thank you, Next PCB. Thank you, the Next PCB. But then, I mean, all we've added is just an LED and a button. And uh, this is a, a, an easy easy product that hopefully is, is pretty useful. My projections are that this thing will last in the CR2032 for about two years, uh, Bluetooth connected. So I'd like to thank Next PCB again for sponsoring this project and some more to share in the future on the firmware side, firmware development, doing uh, Bluetooth and thread development. Probably doesn't show as well in a video, unfortunately, but I'm um, just showing this guy working um, and, and showing power projections and all that that'll be coming up in the future. Um, so if you liked the video, please, 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 my best friend, my best friend that's watching this YouTube video right now, like the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe so that I am incentivized to make more videos just like this one. And I think they want you to hit the bell, right? They said hit the bell. Um, so hit the bell as well. It'll make me feel 
even I'll be your bestest friend. I'll be your best friend of all time. Uh, yeah. Thank you. It's been I squared C Jack. Follow me on X. See ya.